Hi everyone, I'm Jenny. Um, today I'm going to talk about Git and share a few tips and tricks that can help improve your Git workflow. So, um, first, just wanted to share this comic that you may have seen before. It kind of sums up how we all feel about Git. Um, but hopefully, after today, you'll learn how to use the tool a little better and not have to do this all the time and delete your work and start over again. <laughs> Um, so just to see, you know, where to learn more about all the different commands in Git, of course you can read the documentations online. Um, you can also use these commands right in your terminal. It's kind of a quick way to browse through commands. So for example, comparing the first two, um, git help command, it gives you a very detailed, um, it helps you look up the very detailed manual pages right in your terminal for you, and you can scroll through that. Or you could do git um, and you insert that command dash h and it'll print a really short overview of the call syntax as well as the most important options for you. So it's just a quick way to browse the docs on in your terminal. Something that I also thought was really helpful, um, git help every day, it tells you every day git in about 20 commands or so and it breaks down into different categories between um, an individual developer as a standalone or as a participant in a group or as an administrator. So for example, if you're just kind of figuring out more um, commands that you want to learn and incorporate in your daily usage, you can just do type in this and it'll tell you, for example, a standalone individual developer should probably at least know these commands. Um, so commands we know so far, and we've used dozens of times throughout junior phase. This is um, on GitHub. It kind of tells you like um, really basic commands you at least need to know to start up a re repo um, and to you know add whatever your work you have so far. But as we move into senior phase, just a few options and um, that you can incorporate with the commands that you already know that will hopefully um, be allow you to be more efficient as you're working with Git. So to go in that in detail, um, git add dash p, it stands for dash dash patch. It brings you in, into an interactive mode that goes through all of your change files and allows you to selectively add the ones that you want to add. Um, it's really useful, it brings up this text staged as hunk. Um, you can choose to add some of the files instead of all the ones that you made changes to, but what I think is even cooler um, is that you can add parts of just one change file. So for example, here I made changes to albums.js in the top and the bottom, and it'll show you, for example, I want to stage the top hunk, um, Y for yes, but not the bottom, and for no, and then you can, only, you can choose you know, which parts you actually want to add. So it's a good way, instead of adding the whole file at once. Uh, git commit dash dash amend, it allows you to combine your stage changes so far with your previous commit, so you don't have to create a brand new one. So Let's say, for example, here, you've edited two files, main.js and index.html. You added one, committed it, but forgot to add the other. You can just quickly amend that, and it'll keep your project history more clean, so you don't have to make a dozens of you know, little commits where it only adds like one file at a time. Um, the no edit flag here allows you to make the amendment um, to your commit without changing the message, which you can change if you want, but otherwise, you, know, you can just do that, and it'll just add that file to your previous commit. Uh, so when you're doing a git pull, it actually does two commands, git fetch, which downloads all the changes from another repository, and then you git merge it with your own branch. But if you put, um, use the rebase option, you do a git fetch plus a git rebase. So what is git rebase? Um, it allows you to merge your branches by changing the commit that they were based on. So what this means is, say you want to push your changes up to a branch that someone else already pushed before you, and you normally want to pull down their changes first and then push up you know, what you've changed. So normally Git does a merge commit in that situation, which is something you do under the, un under the hood, and it can be really numerous among a huge team, it doesn't really convey any useful information, um, and it litters the project history, so doing a rebase also allows you to remove these unnecessary commits. Um, it also preserves a linear project history. So to go into this in detail, let's say I'm comparing the two. Um, so in this situation, let's say originally there were three commits, A, B, and C, um, and then developer David comes along and creates commit D, and then later um, developer Ed creates commit E. So in that way, when it tries to resolve that, if you do a merge, GitHub does um, create a merge commit M, which inherits both those changes, D and E. But if you do a rebase, it avoids that. It avoids having that diamond shape because Ed, 
developer Ed, all of his commits are essentially inheriting D, and then he's creating that commit R on the bottom. So it preserves a very linear um, project history. It's really nice and straight. It's easier for future developers to, to follow your work. Um, in fact, pulling with rebase is such a common workflow that there's actually a dedicated configuration option to it. So if you type that into your terminal, it'll add that to your global config file, git config file, and then every time you pull from that point on, it'll just do a rebase instead of a merge. Um, and then a few commands that I don't think we use enough and we should incorporate more in our daily workflow because they can be really useful. Um, rebase dash I, so I stands for interactive and it allows you, this interactive rebasing allows you kind of more control over what your project history looks like. Um, so say for example, you know, you made a series of commits but your last three are not as, I would say, um, useful to future developers reading your work. It's just you kind of forgetting to commit um, or fixing a bug. So you can actually go into this interactive mode, squash the last three commits into the change something commit with all those, with all of those changes. And then anyone, preview, anyone reviewing your history later will just see a very, very like, nice series of commits that seems really well planned out in the first place. Um, so it allows um, developers to have a lot of freedom, kind of commit um, pretty messily, and then go back and clean it up later on. Um, so git diff, it allows you to, sh it shows you the difference between the last commit and the state of your current working directory. So it's a good way to kind of compare what you've changed so far. But if you put the um, cached option, which, or also stage, it lists the changes in all the files that you've added so far that you've staged for commit. Um, it's really useful because, you know, you can kind of, again, just go through what, you're, what you've added, what you've changed, what you've added. But before you actually commit it, you know, you're previewing everything, making sure that you've had the right files, the right changes. And then when you do write that commit message, it's pretty clear exactly what, you're, what you've changed and what you want to commit. So it's a good way to preview what you're doing. Um, git stash, uh, some of you might be using this already. It's a good way to store away all your stage changes. So say you're you know, midway through a code change, you're not quite ready to commit yet, but you don't want to abandon all your work so far, you're stashing it away somewhere. Um, and git, main, for this, it maintains a um, last in, first out structure. It kind of operates like a stack. So everything you stash, you're essentially pushing onto the stack, and then you can do git stash pop to pop off your most recently changed, um, your most recently stashed files. Um, alternatively, you can also do apply, git stash apply to um, apply these changes to, let's say, multiple branches at once. Um, or you can list all of them and you can drop the most recently changed uh, files. Um, so in another situation, let's say that you and your team has worked on um, your code a lot, you've committed a lot, you decide to run a test, but then realize, because you realize you haven't done it in a while and everything breaks. Um, so the question is, where exactly did that happen? You know, did it, is it because of your most recent commit or is it like from way back when because you forgot to run tests all this time? So how do you figure that out? Uh, git bisect is a really good tool to do that. It uses binary search to find the commit that first introduced the bug. So what, it's, uh, what you do is you type in git bisect start to get things going. Um, and you say right now the commit that you're on is bad. There's a bug, something's broken. So you remember, let's say, at commit v1.0, that at that point, everything was still fine. So you tell the, you tell the system that it was good at that commit. Um, it figures out that between bad and good, there's 12 commits that happen in between those two. So it does a binary search, and it says, you know, there, it checks out the middle one for you, and it says there's six revisions left to test after this. At that point, at that middle one, you say you run your test, you see if it's good or bad, if it's good, then that means the problem was introduced sometimes after this middle commit. So then it, you say good, and then it'll run it on those six after that middle commit, and then it'll keep going down from six down to three down to two um, until finally it gives you um, the commit that you've eventually narrowed down to where you know the first bad commit is, and it'll tell you the details of that, when that was, um, what that commit is called. Um, and then you can just check that out, fix the bug there, and then you're all good to go. Um, and when you're finished, um, do git bisect reset to reset to where you were before you started. Um, aliases, so you can't auto-complete commands in git with tab, unfortunately. So sometimes instead of typing out the whole command, you can create aliases, um, shorten them as the most common ones do. So for example, check out branch commit status if you don't want to actually type out the five or six extra characters, you can shorten that. Um, what I think is more useful is for something like commit amend, um, dash dash no edit, instead of typing that whole thing out, just shorten that to amend. 
um, and other things that you can also configure in your Git config file as well. Um, so main takeaways, you know, instead of Git adding all, just try partial adding. It's a good way to kind of preview what you want to add before you commit it. Um, use the rebase option to avoid any unnecessary merge commits that can litter your project history, and you can keep that also linear instead of creating diamond shapes along the way. Um, Git div cached, you can use that to check file changes before you commit, and then configure aliases to increase your efficiency and reduce the chances of typos. Um, some resources if you want to learn more. Atlassian has some really good examples, which I've browsed through a lot. Um, so it's a good way to check out more. And that's it. Thank you very much.